اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فانساهم انفسهم اولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي اصحاب النار واصحاب الجنه اصحاب الجنه هم الفائزون لو انزلنا هذا القران على جبل لرايته خاشعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الاسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والارض وهو العزيز الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most gracious most merciful الحمد لله all praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household, his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them, to bless every one of us, our offspring, those to come right up to the end. May Allah keep them steadfast on the deen. May Allah make it easy for us to be steadfast on the deen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us paradise. Amin. My brothers and sisters, this is actually a grand venue, as you can see, mashallah. The first time I heard the grand venue, I thought, so what is it? Meaning, what's the name of it? And then I realized, well, the name of the venue is the Grand Venue. And now I know why it's called the Grand Venue. Because it is indeed a Grand Venue. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant barakah to those who allowed us the use of this beautiful facility today. To those who volunteered to make this possible. To every one of you who attended and participated. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all togetherness in Jannatul Firdaus. For indeed, when we gather for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we gather in order to listen to something to do with bringing us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is called the remembrance of Allah. These types of gatherings are called gatherings of the remembrance of Allah because they remind us of Allah. We have not gathered here for something worldly. We have not gathered here in order to earn something or in order to do a deal that is connected to the business of the world. But it is business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu hal adullukum ala tijara. O you who believe, should I show you a business? Should I lead you to a business? 
هل أدنكم على تجارة تنجيكم من عذاب أليم Should I lead you to a business that will save you from a very painful punishment? That's what Allah says. So there are two types of business. One is that which will save you from being uncomfortable on earth by allowing you to earn in terms of material wealth that which may make you buy or purchase the comfort of the world that is very physical and temporary. But the true business is the other business, that which will bring you the contentment of the soul, that which will lead you into eternal bliss, that which will take you to the hereafter, that which will actually open your heart in a way that you taste the coolness and the calmness of the relationship that you have with Allah. And this is why wealth alone has never brought about happiness and contentment to anyone. Some of the most depressed people are those who are extremely wealthy, but they've forgotten Allah. But good news to those whom Allah has blessed with both. May Allah grant us both. Ameen. That was quite a nice loud Ameen. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. May Allah definitely grant us both. We want at the same time the goodness of this world. We want the goodness of the hereafter. One might say, well, that's always correct. But you know, life is such that we become oblivious of our connection with Allah while we're connecting ourselves to the globe and to the comfort and materialism of this world. I need a little bit of comfort, I do. But not compromising my relationship with Allah. I need to earn, but I need to fulfill my salah. I need to go out to work, but I need to make sure that I'm dressed well. And by the way, when we speak about dressing well, it's not just directed to females as some of the men think. It's directed to the males as well. And I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. The trends of today, wow. Some of them are okay, but some of them, subhanallah, they leave you showing your designer label on your underwear. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. So we need to direct it to the males as well. Some so tight that even the sisters won't fit into that. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease. I'm just trying to balance it to say, my beloved brothers who are here, when we talk about dress, don't just say, yeah, tell them, yeah, tell them. You're the guys who stare, by the way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But to be more serious, it's actually addressed to all of us, myself included. I also need to be careful how I dress, how I carry myself when we say dress in islam it doesn't just mean what you're putting on but it includes what, how you carry yourself when we talk of hijab hijab is not just the type of clothing you have externally but it's a condition that you carry yourself upon it is a way of life as well it's part and parcel of your identity and that would include the men as well as the women this is why when allah speaks about lowering of the gaze he says Tell the believing males to lower their gazes and protect their chastity or protect their private parts. He starts off by speaking to the males, the males, and the women come only thereafter. There must be a reason. Well, the reason is at times the men need it more than anyone else, but we all need it. Let's be fair. We all need it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So the point being raised is when we develop a relationship with Allah and when we earn whatever this world has to offer in a way that we are trying our best to become better as the days pass with our link with Allah rather than going away. As Allah gives you a better job, as Allah gives you a higher salary, as Allah gives you better deals and you earning more, you should become closer to Allah and you should feel it. You should tell yourself, you should be able to tell yourself, I'm a better person today in my link with Allah than I was back in the day or than I was yesterday. And thank Allah for that. And don't worry about what people have to say about you because they don't know who you were and where you were yesterday. You're the only one who knows. And for that reason, don't discourage others when you see them in a certain physical outward condition because you don't know where they may have been yesterday. I've seen people who have been astray completely and they come on track 
and overtake those who've been on the right path, so to speak, in a way that, subhanallah, it's only Allah to thank for. And here you have people who, who were busy judging them, not realizing I'm not yet dead. We will be judged by the score at the end of the game. You don't just see England losing, for example, and start becoming depressed. You wait for the whistle to be blown. And then you find out that they lost. And then you can be sad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us victory. Sorry to use football as an example, but you know, when we're in Blackburn, we have to do that, mashallah. So the same applies to us. My life started at a certain point. It's going to end us at a certain point. And so did yours. Your struggles, you alone know those struggles. The others don't know them. You know where you were. You know how difficult the situations are in your life. And for this reason, Allah calls himself owner of the day of judgment. Maliki yawmiddin. We read it so many times. Allah says, owner of the day of judgment. What's a day of judgment? Have you thought about it? It's a day where Allah will judge. Have we installed ourselves as little Allah's astaghfirullah? Where we start judging and telling people you heaven, hell, heaven, hell, as you see them. But this is what people do. And unfortunately, it is those at times who claim piety that do this more. And they don't realize that shaitan comes to you at times more than he goes to others. Because he knows that he didn't manage to get your salah out. He didn't manage to get your dress code out. He didn't manage to get your zakah out. He didn't manage to get your psalm and fasting out. So what he does is he gets you out. By doing what? Messing the heart. Dirty heart. Dirty, filthy heart. This is why when we talk of the remembrance of Allah, one of the most important factors is to clean your heart. What will the remembrance of Allah do for you? It makes you conscious of the rest of the creatures of Allah. Their struggles are known by none other than Allah. So when you see people, instead of passing a comment of judgment, you'd rather pass a comment of encouragement. Because we need that encouragement too. There are so many examples in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ of people who may have been struggling to, towards getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but a deed or two of theirs was more beloved to Allah than every other deed they've done, such that Allah ignored the bad and gave them paradise. This is the remembrance of Allah. We have to ensure that we realize the gift of Allah. And this is why the dua that is to be made by a Muslim is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. And we are now in the days of Hajj. We're already in the months of Hajj. You know, there are three months known as the months of Hajj. Do you know what they are? Immediately after Ramadan. Shaban. Is it Shaban? Shawwal. Come on, guys. Shawwal, Dhul Qi'da and Dhul Hijjah. Shawwal, Dhul Qi'da, Dhul Hijjah. Those are the three months of Hajj. Right now, we're about to commence the month of Dhul Hijjah. And Allah speaks about some dua. What is a dua? Dua is a supplication. You call out to Allah. I call out to Allah. We all call out to Allah. What do we call out to Him for? For our needs. If He wanted, we would not have been in any need. But Allah created us such that we have needs. So that He can test us. Who are you going to call out to? You call out to Allah for what? All your needs. Number one, what I need urgently and immediately. What do I need? I need something to be able to live, to eat, to breathe. That's what I need. I need the ability to pray, the ability to do good deeds. I need that ability, that capacity. So your physical health, your, your economic, the, the little... Uh, financial situation that you're in you need it solved you need something so that at least you can live a decent life and the problem is once we live a decent life you know how man is he always wants to live a more decent life he wants a little bit more comfortable I have a friend who bought a Range Rover I told him lovely car he says wait until I get my helicopter <laughs> I said, okay Kai ask we haven't even dreamt of this Range Rover and you're busy thinking of a helicopter. But it's fine. It's one of those things. It just goes to prove that, you know what? People are on different levels. 
The Range Rover, the helicopter will not take you to Jannah unless you use it in the right way. And unless the more you get, the more humble you become. The more you reach out to people, the more you greet. Don't worry about what the world says. Greet. Learn to greet. One of the biggest sicknesses we face today is the fact that we don't greet. I can tell you I've been to cities where the non-Muslims have greeted me more than the Muslims. Subhanallah. Non-Muslims, look at you. Hello, hi, how are you? Have a good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And the Muslims just look at you. And after a moment, they, they, they recognize you. <gasps> Is that Mufti Meng? Oh, Salaam Alaikum. Ha, ha. You now want to greet me just because you, re you recognized who it was. Not at all. May Allah help me first. May I become from among those who can clean my heart. And every one of us learn to love one another. True remembrance and the benefit of it will only be when you love one another. That's why the Prophet ﷺ was addressing his companions. He says, You see, before I translate that hadith, let me go back to another hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says, the people of paradise and the people who will be VIPs on the day of Jannah will be so many categories. And one of those categories from the seven is those who love each other for the sake of Allah. Do you know what loving each other for the sake of Allah means? I love someone because I know Allah made them and they are trying, they are trying to get closer to Allah in some way or another. And even if they're not, I would love to see them come out of that sin they may be involved in. So I will work in my own way to get the message across to them. Because the Prophet ﷺ says, For Allah to use you to guide one person towards this goodness and guidance is better for you than humurin na'am actually means the red camel. And the red camel was the best and most expensive means of conveyance at the time. You know the Range Rovers and helicopters we spoke about moments ago? Something like that. It's better for you than your heli. Better for you than your little private jet is if Allah used you to guide how many people? How many? One. One. That's the hadith. So work on yourself to be able to address people who might be seemingly astray in a way that when you talk to them, they remember Allah. That's why when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu read the Quran to us from the verses he read was the story of Moses, Musa alayhi salam. Do you know what he says in the story of Musa alayhi salam? What Allah says, Allah narrated it to us. Who was he sent to? The worst of all. The worst of the time was a man known as the Pharaoh. Even the Old Testament has this. That Pharaoh, Allah says, we sent the best of the time to him and we told the best of the time. The best of the time was Musa alayhi salam, the prophet Moses. May peace be upon him. Allah says, we sent Musa and his brother Harun alayhi salam to the Pharaoh, Fir'aun, who was the worst. And we told them, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Go to him. And speak to him with soft speech. Soft speech. He didn't say go to him and start insulting him and swearing him and judge him and say. They all knew who the Pharaoh was but there was hope that perhaps he might turn to Allah. So Allah says you go to him, speak to him with soft words. That means something palatable, something beautiful, something soft, something lovely. Speak to them with some beautiful words. Speak to him with beautiful words. Why? Perhaps he may be reminded or he might become conscious of Allah. Which means you guys watch your words. And as for him, Allah already knew what was going to happen. But Allah didn't say, I know that the Pharaoh is not going to believe. So don't waste your time going there. Because Allah knows that by you going there, you're fulfilling the instruction of Allah. So you're going to get the reward. Whether or not he gets or she gets guidance is up to Allah. Today, none of us can claim to be better than the Prophet Moses, Musa alayhi salam. Not one. 
And none of those were ever going to meet or come across, including the biggest enemies of Islam on earth today, can be worse than the Pharaoh himself. Because the Pharaoh used to say, I am your God. I am the God and I am the highest. The Pharaoh told his people, Oh my people, I don't know of a deity fit to be worshipped by you besides me. <laughs> I don't know of a deity for you to worship besides me. That was the height of tyranny. So none of those we're going to ever meet can be worse than the Pharaoh. And none of us can be better than Musa alayhi salam. So don't you think we should be speaking to everyone with a greater concern, with a more beautiful speech, with more softness in our approach. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam again in a verse. Allah says in the Quran, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ It is because of the mercy of Allah. It is due to the mercy of Allah that you are so lenient with those around you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. If you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have dispersed. They wouldn't even have wanted to listen to Muhammad So what was the sign of the mercy of Allah? Leniency. Leniency. I ask myself, and I ask you to ask yourselves, are you lenient? If you are, the Quran says, it's a sign of the mercy of Allah upon you and all those around you. Are you a lenient person? Or are you harsh and hard-hearted? And you know what? You need to ask the people around you, am I lenient? I can see the men looking at me. They, it's, it's like they're going to go home and say, am I lenient? <laughs> Take it easy. Do I look like I'm harsh or hard-hearted? <laughs> they're going to say, no, not at all. Not at all. Because they're gonna be <clears throat> there's going to be trouble if they say anything else. But what you do, you have to find out from those you live with how you are. Find out from those who live in your house how you are and change yourself. It's a sign of the mercy of Allah. When we talk of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I promise you my brothers, my sisters, when we talk of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to keep on repeating things because that is part of the remembrance of Allah. How am I going to be reminded about Allah when someone hasn't repeated things? The Quran says, وَذَكِّرْ and remind. Remind meaning repeat things. Why? فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ For indeed the reminding, the constant reminder benefits those who truly believe. If you truly believe, you don't get irritated that this man's repeating this for the fourth time. But you feel within your heart, I think it must be so important. That's why he's saying it again. The Prophet, peace be upon him, when there was a young lad who came to him saying, imagine you get your moment with Muhammad sallallahu May Allah grant us not just a moment, but eternity. Amen. He met Muhammad sallallahu and he was excited. He, he, he wanted to say something, ask something. You know, he got this messenger sallallahu alayhi wa right in front of him. He says, Ya Rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Awsini Ya Rasulallah, give me some advice. Subhanallah. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all and may Allah bless us all. Sometimes we expect a long answer. He's asking the messenger, one wonders what he was expecting. If it was me, I would expect a whole paragraph. Say, sit down, let me give you advice, son. The Prophet looked at him. I wonder how he looked because there's no description of the guy. He says, La taghdab. Don't get angry. That's it. Meaning, watch your temper. There must have been something for him to say that, right? Sometimes you see some of the young boys and girls. Some of those who are a little bit older, the expression on your face already says you're a person with a temper. I mean, if I just come to you, you know. Someone says, advise me, advise me. I say, cool down, calm down, relax, take it easy. The expression on your face actually ages you. Do you know that? 
if you have an expression of a temper and anger and every time you have these the headlines you know the headlines what will happen the creases live there forever and you're only 25 but there's already four headlines subhanallah lots of news isn't it <laughs> may allah grant us ease relax just be normal just smile so the prophet sallam said to him la taghdab he says okay give me a bit more advice he says don't get angry he says okay give me more advice he says don't get angry one narration says he kept on repeating it until the people thought to themselves wow i, I hope that now it's enough he can keep quiet subhanallah subhanallah imagine and another narration says he said it thrice don't don't get angry don't get angry why three times one was enough because the reminder helps us it definitely helps us so this reminder that we definitely need we need if we are from among those who smile when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends someone to remove us from evil to clean the heart and the cleansing of the heart is so difficult that we will not know the qualities within us that need rectification until and unless we interact with genuine people and we're ready to listen to others regarding what our weaknesses are that's when you're going to be refined you could be a father in your home you could be a mother you could be a father in law you could be a mother in law you could be a son or a daughter you could be a daughter in law or a son in law i promise you the only time you're going to know your true value is when you ask those within your house really and truly where do i need correction please tell me and work on it don't just get angry and upset no work on it where do i need correction learn to smile learn to sacrifice right so let's go back to this hadith the prophet sallallahu says should i not show you something that if you were to do it it would increase the love between you why increase the love why do i need the love you need the love because man needs company when i say man here i'm referring to human kind okay human kind human beings need company it's good to have two people three people i know a lot of us myself included sometimes we're very wary of the type of company that we associate with but that's part of the hadith but if you had ideal company wouldn't you feel so good people who who care for each other they don't have to be exactly like you but they have to respect each other in that case what happens you enjoy life a bit more it's really good the value of family is not known except by those families who are easy going the other day i officiated someone's nikah in one of the cities here in the uk and they asked me to say a few words so i said something interesting and i'm repeating this because it's part of reminding us about allah marriage is a very very important part of your life and mine important part and i said you will only be happy in marriage if you have okay we are muslim so the consciousness of allah and all of that is already there but one thing you need as a quality what is it you need to be easy going if you're not easy going and if you're very very hard and fast with your way and that's it and this is it there are going to be problems and i tell people let others have their way as well it doesn't always have to be your way or it doesn't always have to be their way but learn to compromise learn to give and take what's important to you what is important to you so because this love is so important the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us those who loved each other for his sake will have a special shade on the day of judgment right and now the prophet peace be upon him is teaching us do you know how that love is going to come do you want me to teach you something simple that can increase the love between you what do you think he said he just said afshu salam bainakum spread the salam amongst you now the salam is a broad term it starts off with assalamu alaikum if i want love assalamu alaikum look i can tell you something about myself for a few years now i've been trying this and i promise you it works it works wonders greet people whether they like you or they don't like you ignore that it's got nothing to do i'm not doing good to someone because they deserve good no i'm doing good to someone because allah loves those who do good that's the reason why i will keep doing good even if they don't like me do you see the point if i'm doing good to you because i think you deserve good the day i think you don't deserve good what happens to my good it stops so what was i doing it for for you 
not for Allah. What reward did I get? I already got the smile back from you, the greeting back from you. The day I didn't get it back from you, I stopped, you stopped. But when I'm doing it for the sake of Allah, I've remembered Allah. You are a creature of Allah and so am I. We are brothers and sisters. What makes me better than you? This afternoon I visited a place called the Purple Patch. Some of you might know this place. The Purple Patch is here in Blackburn. A group of volunteers got together in order to try and assist those who are challenged with any form of disability. And they're doing a splendid job. And they have within their circles volunteers and people who are working free of charge in order to assist those who may be facing those type of challenges and disabilities that Allah has tested them with. As a result, I tell you, they are paving their path to paradise. All you needed to do was just to make a dua. May Allah bless them. Say Amin. May Allah make it easy for them and for everyone else. My brothers and sisters, when we learn to love each other for the sake of Allah and we do good to people because we want to earn the pleasure of Allah, we've truly remembered Allah. We've understood the link between us. I was saying, I started greeting people, smiling, ask them, how are you? If you see someone young, ask them, what's your name? Even if you don't remember the name for very long, but it means so much to them. It means so much to them. How are you feeling today? That question is, subhanallah, it changes the day of a person. But you know what? I like to travel by train here in the UK. The Virgin train straight to Houston, mashallah. I think it's the quickest way to get to London. That's what I think faster than an aircraft because aircraft you've got to go early one hour you can't carry x y and z you know meaning your your liquids and your this and your weight needs to be 20 kilos and so on and so forth train you catch it i promise you two hours 11 minutes later you're landing somewhere but there's one problem everyone's just looking down and a lot of them are just on their phones and there's no one we have a difficulty muslims do not greet muslims if you see a Muslim brother or a sister, they will justify not greeting each other. They won't. Because why? <gasps> Haram. A Muslim sister, you can't greet her. Haram. But the name, hi Susan, what's up, man? Huh? Okay. <laughs> what happened to that? Subhanallah. Why the double standards here? Greet the people if you are greeting them. You know, we've seen, I've seen people requiring help. And the Muslims just zoom past. Boom, 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 boom. Straight past. And who stops? The non-Muslims. They stop to help and assist. We are supposed to be reaching out first. And sometimes you might have a person who won't reciprocate it because they might be, you know, a little bit on the hard side. They might be going through having a bad day if I can just, you know, think good about them. They might be having a bad day. It's fine. You did your duty. Assalamu alaikum. <gasps> this guy greeted the women. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> you know, one guy was telling me, how come you sign your books and there's all these women coming to sign books? I said, brother. You have a business, you have such a big beard at your supermarket, you're selling Cokes and you're selling everything else and then hi to everyone, then it's fine, isn't it? And we're standing here, there's no khalwa, there's no, there's, I'm selling a product here for charity. That's what it is. I'm selling a product for charity and these people are paying X amount and they just want the book signed and something, some acknowledgement. There's nothing wrong. I'm not a hypocrite. I will not lead a double life where I pretend like something is wrong just when it suits me. Didn't I tell you moments ago, the biggest judges are those who are outwardly pious. Because shaitan comes to them to mess their heart, to think bad about others whom they don't know. Yes, you might be driving your car, you might be 50 miles ahead of me spiritually. But guess what? Allah just helped me. I bought a Ferrari. I'm going to zoom straight past you just now. Subhanallah. And I'm not going to be one of those sore guys who's going to wave at you on my way. Huh? Do you remember we were on the path? I'm going ahead. No. Allah can grant me and you guidance before the others. The same way Allah can grant others guidance while we're on the path. And they can be more rightly guided than us and more spiritual and more religious and more connected to Allah than you and I overnight. Look at Umar ibn Khattab. What an example. What an example. He was the 40th to accept Islam. He went out to murder Muhammad sallallahu but they had hope. They didn't judge the man to say he's in hell. No. And when he jumped on at 40, 
He took over everyone. He's known as the second best to tread this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first being Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Subhanallah. But what did he do? There was a lot of damage he had done in the past. Look at Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu an. Similar example. A lot of damage in the past. But when he jumped on, he zoomed past a lot of people. So when you see people, learn to soften your heart. Learn to greet for the sake of Allah. I don't want anything from you. I don't want to be fed. I don't want to be clothed. I don't want your drink. I don't want your food. I don't want your gifts. All I want is for you to have a good day. That's it. All I want is for me to reach out to you so that you can smile and you can restore your faith in humanity for the sake of Allah. That's all I want. I will greet you just because I want to greet you. There's no ulterior motive. Today, we greet people when we have something at the back of our minds. We greet people. But greet people for the sake of Allah. The hadith says, it will increase the love. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, my brother? Even if I don't know your name yet, it's okay. So for as long as I made you feel good. I made you feel really good. You, you felt this love. What happened? In essence, it restored your faith in humanity. I began to feel I belong to a whole ummah. I belong to humanity. If something happens to me, there are, you know, if I've fallen, I'm not going to have people coming with rocks and throwing them so that I'm destroyed after that. But I'm going to have thousands of people come and help me up. Help me up. But the way we carry on, we don't look, we don't greet, we don't talk. Only when we need it. The hadith says, you, you should greet those you know and those you don't know. You greet those whom you know, those whom you don't know. My brothers and sisters, today, even if we restore just this greeting, I promise you, it's equivalent to remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's a, an instruction of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi an instruction of the Prophet ﷺ. So that hadith I was speaking about, the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should I not show you something if you were to do it, you would actually increase the love between you. Spread the salam. So salam means starting with the greeting, Assalamu Alaikum, but it's a prayer. Learn to pray for each other. How do we pray for each other? The first words you should ever say when you see another is a prayer. Did you know that? What's the prayer? Assalamu alaikum. What does it actually mean? May peace be upon you. What is may peace be? It's a prayer. I'm asking Allah to have peace on you, blessings on you, mercy on you, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The mercy of Allah and His blessings, may they be upon you. If you're really genuine and I'm really genuine with that, we've solved most of our problems. The difficulty is, we just say, Assalamu alaikum. And it's done. Doesn't it sound so familiar? It's an act of worship. I'm praying for you, brother. May peace be on you. You know, there was once an experiment done by another sheikh. And I happened to, you know, be affected by it in a positive way. Where the brothers came to me, peace be on you. May peace be on you. So I said, say assalamu alaikum. He said, no. A sheikh told us, just for an experiment, for two days, try saying it in a language you understand. To be able to know what you're saying. And I said, whoa, okay. I mean, maybe it's just an experiment for two days. But I was woken up because I heard someone say, may peace be on you and the blessings of Allah and his mercy. And I'm like, ameen, ameen. He says, no, you're supposed to say, and you too. I said, okay, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah? And you too? And that's why the, the Quran says, وَإِذَا حُيِّتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا If anyone greets you with a greeting, reply it with a better greeting. Or at least return it. But don't give something lower. So if someone says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, you're supposed to say, Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and pay me a pound for the 20 seconds that I took more. Trust me, you're going to get more than a pound from Allah. So the dua of Surah Al-Baqarah, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab nar That's the dua mentioned in Muzdalifa. The Quran speaks about a dua you should make in Muzdalifa. The Quran mentions a dua that you should Mentioned in Muzdalifa, not just in Muzdalifa, but it's speaking about 
Muzdalifah and Arafah and during Hajj. What is it? If someone says, you're going for Hajj, you must make dua that Allah forgives you and grants you Jannah. We will say, yes, ultimately that's what I want. Whoever goes for Hajj and the Hajj is accepted from them, Allah will forgive their sins and grant them Jannah. But Allah says, don't forget to make dua for your life as well. Make dua for your money, your health. Who's telling you this? Allah is telling it to you. Where? The dua I read. Allah says, when, we, when they get to Muzdalifah, some people say, Oh Allah, give us the world, give us the world, give us the world. When, when we say world, we're talking of materialistic issues and things. But they forget to make dua and to supplicate for the hereafter. So Allah says, you should strike the balance by saying, Oh Allah, grant me goodness in this world. Grant me goodness in the hereafter and protect me from the punishment of the fire. What a beautiful dua. So my brothers and sisters, when you call out to Allah regarding your hereafter, when you supplicate to Allah, it is a sign that you are remembering Allah. Allah made you and I in need. As I said right at the beginning, if Allah wanted, we wouldn't have had this need. But Allah wanted you and I to acknowledge that he is the owner of the solution. This is why I say, oh Allah, grant me happiness. Oh, that itself is such a powerful statement because I'm acknowledging Allah is the owner of happiness. Oh Allah, help me open my doors, grant me goodness. Wow, what a great remembrance of Allah that is because it's acknowledging Allah has what you want. I would never ask you for a hundred pounds if I thought you didn't have it. Would you just go to a guy on the street? Yo, dude. I need a hundred pounds. Look at you and say, I need it too. I need a thousand actually. But if someone was wealthy and someone you knew that this person is giving and this person would, is very generous, you said, you know what? Hey, mashallah, you've been giving everyone hundreds of thousands. I just need one quid. One quid is loose change. You say, forget about the one. I give you 10. I give you a hundred. Take it. So it's like Allah, when you ask him for something, He's given others much more than that. He's going to give you more than what you've asked. And this is why to remember Allah, there is one other thing. A lot of what we have, we didn't even ask for it, but we have it. Do you realize that? A lot of what you have. This is why Muhammad, peace be upon him, says you really want goodness. If you really want to be grateful, show gratitude, that's part of the remembrance of Allah. You need to make sure that you go to those who have less than you and serve them, work with them, help them, look at them, see them. Allah will automatically show you that you have much more. You have so much that you did not, you did not realize. You haven't even asked for it. Because man has a weakness. That weakness is we only pray for things after we realize they're gone or we're losing them. Have you ever said to Allah, Oh Allah, help me breathe correctly. Have you ever said that? Unless you have asthma, right? Subhanallah. <laughs> because if you cannot breathe, then you say, oh Allah, help me breathe properly. But how many of us have said, oh Allah, I thank you for allowing me to be able to breathe for all these years without even thinking that I'm breathing. Subhanallah. That's the remembrance of Allah. الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار Beautiful verses of the end of Ali Imran where Allah says Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between them and the movement of the day and the night, there are signs for those who ponder. Allah says, those who remember Allah, yadhkurun Allah, remember Allah, which means they are pondering over the creation of Allah, standing and sitting and on their sides. And they're thinking about the creation of Allah. So for you to ponder over the favors of Allah upon you is the remembrance of Allah. And you thank Allah as a result by doing what? 
it strengthens me with my salah. When I fulfill my salah, I don't just do it to get done with it. No, I do it because I want to do it. I've always said, the day you start reading salah or fulfilling your prayer because you want to do it is the day you've arrived at a new level in your connection with Allah. What do I mean? A lot of us, we fulfill our five daily prayers not because we want to, because we have to. Very big difference. Very big difference. I'm not saying it's wrong to do something because you have to do it but the day you now do it not because you have to only but because you want to you enjoy it it gives you the comfort it brings you that solace it brings you contentment that's the day you've arrived at a new relationship with Allah so I'm encouraging yourselves and myself when we fulfill the prayer let's do it because we want to do it not because we have to do it alone have to meaning it's compulsory but I'm not doing it just because I want to get over and done with it. No, I'm doing it because you know what? Really, Allah is so merciful. He's allowed me to breathe. He hasn't charged me for the heartbeat. He hasn't. 36,000 heartbeats. How many heartbeats? Thousands of them. 136,000. If you had to pay a penny, a penny, half a penny, a penny per 10, we make it cheaper. Penny for 100, we would be bankrupt. Do you know that? When one beat of your heart is out of sync, everything comes to an end. Subhanallah. One beat is out of sync. You're rushing from pillar to post, hospital to here, cardiologist to another. Everything's happening. Why? One beat went out of place. But you and I didn't even think of that for these 50 years that we've been alive. We didn't remember Allah because nothing went wrong. So Allah says, when I love you, I'm going to let some things go wrong so that you can come to me. Allahu Akbar. When things go wrong in your lives, my brothers and sisters, it's because Allah wants to bring you closer to Him, not because He wants to chase you away. So bear patience. Patience is part of the remembrance of Allah. That's why the hadith says, In Allah ida ahabba abdan ibtala. When Allah loves a slave, a worshipper, He sends tests in that direction so that this worshipper can become softened and closer to Allah. When your problem and difficulty and hardship brings you closer to Allah, it was a gift of Allah. But when your ease sends you further from Allah, it was the punishment. <coughs> so my brothers and sisters, beautiful are those who love one another for his sake. Beautiful are those who turn to Allah and encourage others, not discourage. Beautiful are those who call others with sweet words, with good words. Beautiful are those who don't pass judgment against others. Don't waste your time talking about someone else. I tell my colleagues in my own field, the day you speak about another is the day you have nothing to offer the people. Speak about what you have. Speak about what Allah says. Speak about what Allah has prohibited, what Allah has ordained. Encourage the people. Use the best ways. Use the best means. Not everyone is the same. But the day I've got to take a name of someone else in order for me to attack a person, that's the day I'm distancing myself from Allah. I'm now worried about others. Tuba liman shagalahu aibuhu an bin nas. Give good news of a special place in paradise to those whose own weaknesses occupy them from engaging in the weaknesses of others. Unless you're engaging positively. Positively meaning. You want to help them, you want to remind them, you want to encourage them. That's a good thing. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Remember, when we talk of the remembrance of Allah, it's got to do with gaining closeness to Allah, coming closer to Allah in one way or another. And the way you're going to come closer to Allah, yes, through your obligations, we all know the obligations. I don't want to touch much on the obligations because we know them. I know what Allah has asked me to do and so do you. That's why I'm a Muslim. I know what Allah has asked me to stay away from and so do you because we're Muslim. But there are certain things we forget. There are certain things we become oblivious of such as how we think about others. Some people live a life of misery such that everyone in their eyes is a person you've got to doubt. 
It's a weakness. There are good people on earth. There are good people. Don't worry. There are people who are honest. There are people who, who would save themselves from the wrath of Allah in a big way. There are still a lot of good people. And there are people who have been through bad and they've come out and become good. Subhanallah. So therefore, don't judge people based on things that they may have done. A few days ago, I think it was yesterday, I tweeted a tweet connected to how busy we have become judging others and their past. You cannot rule on a person based on who they were. And if someone has done it to you, ignore them. Ignore them. It might affect you. Try not to let it affect you. Because Allah knows. And this is why we have something in Islam known as backbiting. MashaAllah, my time is up, I see. Zakallah khair, Habibi. They've given me a bonus. You guys give me a bonus, inshallah. Five more minutes. Yes? Yes? MashaAllah. Ten. You have ten. Wow, he sounds like a boss. MashaAllah. Thank you, my brother. I hope that wasn't ten seconds. <laughs> ten minutes, right? Okay, so, but I'll, I'll just end what I'm saying, inshallah. The program will continue. We still have a long time, inshallah. But it's important for us to realize, my brothers and sisters, that sometimes what people say, it does affect us. We're human beings. But try not to let it affect you. When you develop your relationship with Allah, and when you realize the role Allah plays in your life is supreme, you tend to ignore. Ignore. Just ignore completely. Sometimes, in, I'm talking about my own life. When I turn towards those who speak evil without knowing my own intention, it becomes such that I, I lose focus. So I stopped turning towards them. Just turn towards Allah. That's it. You're doing something to please Allah. You are a human. You may make mistakes. You have to because you're human. If someone genuinely corrects you in a beautiful way, take it. But if they want to insult you and make a big deal out of it, ignore it. It's a sign of your success. Not everyone's going to love you to succeed. There will be people who will love you to fail. If they had that attitude towards the best of creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you think you and I are going to be spared? If they tried hard to harm him, you think they're not going to try hard to harm me? Who am I? I'm a nothing. I'm a zero, nobody. Who are we? Subhanallah. Compared to the companions who struggled. So have hope, my brothers and sisters, inshallah, with this beautiful message of the remembrance of Allah, by instilling hope within our hearts and respecting each other and loving each other, I'd like to close this first session. Aqulu qawli hadha wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.